everyone. <laughs> and welcome to worship here at Bundamba Salvation Army. This morning we have the great pr- pleasure of sitting under the ministry of the Melvin Staff Band. <laughs> Led, yeah. Led by Bandmaster Ken Waterworth and Executive Officer for the Melbourne Staff Band, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel Bruce Stevens, and he's accompanied by his wife, Deborah. And we know that we're in for a treat. <laughs> Psalm 69.30 says, I will praise the name of God with song and magnify him with thanksgiving. And yesterday we had a perfect example of this at the concerts at Stafford, which involved the MSB, as well as some local salvo bands, including ours. God was magnified through beautiful, excellent, God-centred music. Today that praise feast continues, and we have already been given a taste of that glory with our musical prelude. And we know that we are going to be blessed. So... Please join me with a hearty welcome to our visitors to the Melbourne Staff Band. Friends, it's an absolute joy for us to be with you this morning. Um, Kayleen got it so right. Our focus today is about coming to praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, we want to lift up his name. We are a blessed people. We have so much to be thankful for. So today, we trust and we pray that the Holy Spirit will be amongst us will speak to our hearts and will help us to focus again on what the Lord calls us to in this time. Let me share with you some words from Scripture, from the psalm writer. Blessed be the name of the Lord now and forever. Everywhere from east to west, praise the name of the Lord. For the Lord is high above the nations. His glory is higher than the heavens. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise his name forever. For endless days we will sing your praise. Oh, Lord, our God, praise be to you.
Oh, there's such there's such power in music, isn't there? To proclaim the name, to proclaim how great our God is, to lift up his name. Indeed, for endless days, we will sing your praise, Lord. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. And we want to invite you to share with us now. How about you stand as we lift up our voices in praise and sing, what a beautiful name. What a beautiful name Jesus is. Let's sing together. You are the word of the beginning, one with God, the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you, our oh Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. standing as we share together in a prayer, a responsive prayer. So I invite you to respond. And so we pray today, come Lord Jesus and be one with us. May our hearts be open to receive your love afresh. Come, 
come, Lord Jesus, and be one with us. May our eyes be open to see all you have for us. Come, Lord Jesus, and be one with us. May our minds be open to understand and embrace your wonderful grace. Come now, Lord Jesus, for we want to experience all the blessings you want to give us. Come, Lord Jesus, and be one with us. Come, Lord Jesus, and keep us alert to your calling. Come now, Lord Jesus. May we honour you as we strive to live our holy lives, helped by the Holy Spirit. May our witness bring glory to you, our Redeemer. Amen. Please take your seat. Pray praise praise the lord who is my rock and who trains me for war and battle praise give thanks to the lord for he is good and his love endures forever praise sing the glory of his name and make his praise glorious praise praise be to god who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me praise Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Praise, for he parted the sea and made a path to walk. Praise, I'll praise you wherever I may stand. I'll praise you even as I fall. Praise, for his faithfulness, his goodness, his love, his mercy, his grace. How can you not praise? I believe that my God is good. And even though I'm in the depths of the valley, I'll praise before my breakthrough till my song becomes a triumph. I'll sing because I trust you. God, you're the reason why I sing and I want to give you every part of me. So I'm gonna sing till my voice gives out. I'll lift my hands and surrender. My heart is open, fill me up, God. This is all I have to give to you. So I stand here with arms wide open, hands high and heart abandoned. My whole life is yours, I give it all. Your presence is all I need, want and seek. The air I breathe, the song I sing, the love I need. I wanna live my life with you so close to love you more and more god i know you are strengthening me but today i choose that i will not just praise you on the mountain but i'll praise you when the mountain is in my way because choosing praise is choosing to change i'll change my pain into praise i'll change my problems into purpose i'll change my perspective into promises i'll prevail over the forces against me through the weapon of praise. So God, I'll praise you today. I'll praise you tomorrow. I'll praise you as long as I live because you are good.
please stand and join us. I'm sure you've all got something to praise the Lord for this morning. And here's our moment together where we get to sing our praise to the Lord. Whatever you've got to praise the Lord for this morning, lift your hearts to Him right now. Let's join with the band together. trust that you can sense the presence of the Holy Spirit with us this morning, Permi- working, ministering to, to us through the music, through scripture, through the songs, and we simply, we call out to God this day and we say, Lord, we seek your continued blessing upon us as we worship you. May our praise be acceptable to him. And I, when that's the prayer of our heart, we know that the Holy Spirit is going to reach in, challenge us, touch us, encourage us in ways that might even surprise us. May that be our prayer today. We're going to sing again. I don't think we can sing this song sitting down. Let's stand. Let's sing about how marvellous, how wonderful our great God is. take your seats. We're going to turn to the word of the Lord now. We're looking at the 12th chapter of Isaiah this morning and Ken's going to come and share that with us. Thanks very much, Ken. 
In that day you will sing, I will praise you, O Lord. You were angry with me, but not any more. Now you comfort me. See, God has come to save me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. The Lord God is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. With joy you will drink deeply from the fountain of salvation. In that wonderful day you will sing, thank the Lord, praise his name. Tell the nations what he has done. Let them know how mighty he is. Sing to the Lord for he has done wonderful things. Make known his praise around the world. Let all the people of Jerusalem shout his praise with joy. For great is the Holy One of Israel who lives among you.
It's a beautiful piece, isn't it? Speak through the earthquake, the wind. I wonder how the Lord is going to speak to you this morning, how he'll speak to me. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 12 that Ken read to us just a few moments ago. And one of the things that I want that would come out of our, our reflection on God's word this morning is that maybe you would respond to the question about the song in your heart. What's, if I was to say, what's the song in my heart? You know how you get those earworm things? You know, they just get there and you can't. And I, I, I promise you I'm not going to sing something to you. I don't want you to be left with that. My, actually, let me first say, I noticed this morning when the introductions were made that there was a wonderful introduction to the Melbourne Staff Band. The bandmaster of the band was welcomed, silence. The executive officer was welcomed, silence. My wife was welcomed. She got a clap. Now, what was that about? Let me tell you that this week, wherever we've been driving or whatever, Deborah's been singing this song. It just goes over and over and over. It's... It's just, <laughs> I did suggest to her I'd get her to come and sing it, but trust me, I'm not going to do that to you, not at all. It just, you know how, <laughs> that probably came out the wrong way, didn't it? <laughs> I love you dearly, darling, you're awesome. She sings in perfect pitch, within about a quarter tone, either way. <laughs> but this song, it just goes over and it's been stuck in my head. It's been stuck in my head. So much so I'll probably want to actually check out the song. But in our lives, often it's the song in our heart. It's that message that's key to us, that resonates day in, day out, that is so pivotal to shaping who we are and to shaping how we live our lives in a way that will be glorifying to God, that actually will be healthy for us and the relationships that we keep. That'll see us making a fantastic contribution to, to the community. I th and I thought of Isaiah 12, and maybe if we can go to and check out this first verse. Because if you know about Isaiah, Isaiah is a prophet. And he's basically saying, there will come a time when. So you'll see how the scripture says, in that day you will sing. So Isaiah is saying, you know, the time will come. You know, one day there will come a point where you're going to sing. You're going to be pumped. You're going to be so excited. You're going to be so full of joy. And you're going to sing a song of praise to God. You see what the scripture says there. The song will be, I will praise you, O Lord. You are angry with me. Hang about. Let's just wait for a moment. God angry? I've not often heard. Um, it's interesting that in some of, the, some of the readings that are recommended that we consider in our worship, uh, this chapter actually often starts at verse 2. And I wonder whether it's because we can't cope with the thought of God being angry. But guess what? Um, humanity, we messed up big time, didn't we? We messed up big time. I think of... How does that manifest? I, I think of my own family. Um, I remember my dad, my dad who loves me dearly. And as a youngster, my dad was a printer by profession. And he took me to, to his work one day. And this is way before we had these incredible photocopies and ways in which we reproduce things these days. And it was an old-fashioned printing press. It was The machine was called a Heidelberg Platten. And what happened is this machine, there was someone called a compositor who would set out all the type on this big sort of, you know, metal plate, put it on the, on the printing machine, and it would sort of go backwards and forwards really quickly. Paper would feed through, and that's how you would you'd print things. Dad took me to work one day, and... He's showing me how the machine works. And there was these little guides that had to be adjusted periodically. Um, it's a long time ago to make things sure that things kept in sync. And, you know, young Bruce here, probably age 12 or so, you know, feeling like I've got this under control now. Dad, you've showed me which buttons to push. You can guess the rest of the story already, can't you? Dad goes off for a comfort break 
And whilst he's off, the machine's going, shum, 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 shum. something goes astray. So I thought, I think you just do this one here. <laughs> and I did. I, I, I adjusted and I pulled the lever or the button, whatever it was, and the plate that does all the printing got smashed to smithereens. So this was a commercial job that people were paying for and we let the 12-year-old apprentice loose on it. Guess what? My dad was angry as can be. He was, he was peeved beyond description. That's the official word, peeved. Do we use that word at Bundamber? I should have checked. Actually, it's okay. It's all, it's all good. It was peeved beyond description. And I got a stern talking to did my dad's love for me change at all? Not a bit. You know that. Not a skerrick at all. You think of our Heavenly Father, there would be every reason why God would have been angry with humanity. Every reason. He set things up for us to succeed, to, to live full and rich lives, and we thought we knew better. We thought we knew better. And it's a problem that continues to this, this day in so many ways. Again, Isaiah was foretelling that day when there would be this song in the hearts of people saying, I will praise you, O Lord. Yes, you were, you were pretty annoyed with me, with us. You were angry with me, but not anymore. Now you comfort me because it's a whole new deal. And we know that's the heart of the gospel message. Then he goes on in verse 2 to give some, I think, some really practical instruction. So let's look at verse 2. And the song goes on. And again, remember, this is the prophet foreseeing the joy, what will take place at that day when the Lord has come. See, God has come to save me. So let's just, let's just think about that. There will be a time when God himself will come. And we know that this is the prophecy of Jesus coming. Interestingly, in Isaiah chapter 11, the verse just before this, is where we read that classic little passage about the stump of Jesse, where we know that Jesus will eventually come, be born, God come and be with us. The very next chapter... Isaiah is saying, it's, it's going to be great. There's going to be a time when, when God will come. And so he's now saying, God has come to save me, to save all of us. The heart of the gospel message. I will trust in him and not be afraid. Now, let's pause there for a minute. My concern is, and if I think about my own life's journey, See, I skipped over pretty quickly on that little bit that says, I will trust in him and not be afraid. So often, I think, when we read a verse like this, we will focus on the, yeah, it's fantastic. God has come to save me. Hallelujah. Amen. How good is this? And we will overlook that immediately we are reminded that we have responsibility in this. What's the responsibility that every single one of us has to embrace? It's that I will deliberately make a considered choice that I am going to trust God. Not that I'm going to embrace the philosophy of Jesus. Not that I'm going to accept the principles of good living. Not that, you know, for the, we the Salvation Army, we're a holiness movement. We are so committed to living lives that are glorifying to God, where we, we strive to reflect Jesus. But it even goes, it's not that we, because the dilemma with that is sometimes we can find ourselves almost trying to seek perfection in how we live. And we fail, we fail, we fail when we try to go to perfection route. And yet, I th believe that if we were to have a, a deep discussion today, one-on-one, -on -one, I speculate that for some of us, that deep down, there is still this, 
this this yearning, this this self-talk that tells us that I have to strive to be perfect. Yes, I have to strive to live a holy life. Yes, I need to strive to live a life that's worthy of this God who's made a sacrifice for me and cares for me. But I'm going to mess up. I'm going to get it wrong. And I think for me, hear this in the right way, sometimes I almost get tired of reminding people, hey guys, don't try the perfectionist route because you're not going to make it. You're going to really mess up. And so I've been trying to think, how do I remind people of that? How do I, in a sense, leave you with an earworm that will help you to remember that you're not going to get things perfect? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to, Deborah, in my my bag there, um, I'm just, I'm appointing you as my official caddy for this morning. Do you know what a caddy is? So in there, there's a cap. I need a cap. I need a cap. Oh, you've brought me my Western Bulldogs cap. It's um, some funny sport they play down in the southern states, some weird sport. So I've got my cap. Um, I need a golf ball. Golf ball. And I think there's a stick just over there. Jamie might be able to help you. It's looking good. Looking good. Thanks, Caddy. You beautiful... Yes, thank you, you gorgeous thing. You, you can sit down. Whoosh. The bandmaster's getting a bit worried here. He's thinking, what's this lad up to? What's this lad up to? Okay. So here's what I'm going to try. Any golfers here this morning? A few. <laughs> They're on the green. <laughs> Golf. Oh. I'll try and bear. Whoa! It's concrete down here. Golf, pretty easy game. <laughs> so I'm thinking to myself, if I wanted to try the perfectionist route, and I'm such a great golfer, look, I just look like a golfer, don't I? Hey, look at me, <laughs> look at me strutting my se- my stuff. If I was to maybe place my ball down here somewhere, and I was to hit in this general direction. Gee, I'd be thinking, why did I sit down the front this morning? <laughs> and, like, actually, is the glass insured or not? Do we know? No, no, don't worry. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Um, I reckon, what's the odds of me being able to get a significant percentage of balls to actually come over here and to bounce off here backwards? Like, Please, Caddy, thank you. What do you reckon? We give it a go? Sorry, what was that? Go for it. Okay, here we go. Now, I know it's going to be a bit hard for some of you up the top. Feel free to stand up. It's okay. Let us stand up in church. We're worshipping the Lord here by playing golf. (laughs) Go figure. Okay. Actually, um, you might just want to be ready just to catch it if it comes... Because often, well, just do it from here to make sure. Nah. nah come on. We need to make, it, make this worthwhile. We're going to do it from way over here. Hey, Kayleen, I haven't played for 15 years. I'll just put that out there. Okay. Just getting my, light, my line ready here. Actually, I could do the Happy Gilmore, couldn't I? <laughs> okay, here we go. We need your prayers, please, folks, for these folks over there. Come 
up and die. Come on, nickel, nickel, the metal bit. Oh, one more try. For those of you who haven't worked it out, I wouldn't dare use a golf ball. That would be dangerous. <laughs> you know what? I think I did pretty good, I actually. There was only really one duff, and that was my mulligan. That's a very official golfing term for you get to have that one again. But I, I did pretty reasonably. Here's the deal. You're not going to get it right all the time, are you? You're just not. The most professional golfers, they might do that and get it right 99 times in a row but the chances are they're going to miss one eventually. That's just the way things are in life. See, God has come to save me. I will trust him and I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid even in those times when I mess, mess it up because guess what? I'm puffed. <laughs> I'm not used to so much exercise when I preach, folks. I will not be afraid because why? The verse goes on, the Lord God is my strength. So when things are tough, and I know that I'm going to get it wrong, you know, God actually does grant us, it's almost like he gives us mulligans, that golfing title that says you get another shot at things. Because our God is a God of forgiveness. He's a God who gives us another chance. The Lord God is my strength. And my song. Now, one of the things, in all seriousness, that first shot I had was quite terrible. It was quite terrible because I didn't actually do the official thing that golfers do when, you know, they just keep it all steady like a pendulum. I went all over the shop. If I had the rhythm right, it would have been perfect. It would have been absolutely perfect. What I find in my own daily life is that if I don't have the rhythm right in my life, things get out of whack. Oh, that's another official type. Do you use the word whack here at Bundama? Gee, my goodness. Things do. So for me, it's really important that the song in my heart is something that keeps me on track, on the track that God wants for me for how I live. And that's going to be very different for so many of us. So for me... The importance of actually music is significant. Music is something that stills me. It's something that at times also excites me. It's something that reminds me of lyrics. So one of the things I love about some of the contemporary Christian songs is that they're so closely aligned. They basically sing scripture. And like that piece that the band played at the very start, Prelude on Anastasis, Straight out of the Psalms, essentially. It puts that into my, into my head. It gets me clear and focused. Other things that, for me, are important to my rhythm is I tend to, when I can, I like to go walking regularly. And often when I walk, I'll listen to music. I might listen to a podcast, whatever it might be. Things that will be good for my overall well-being. Each morning, I like to get up and... I tend to be someone who likes to have a cup of coffee, um, but I use a Bible app. For me, I find it really important for me to actually be regularly in the Scripture, saying, Lord, what is it you want to say to me today? Some days it'll be like, okay, all right, thanks for that, what's next? And other days, I'm being honest with you here. <laughs> this one over here is not too sure about this bloke. Why did we invite him to preach this morning? But it is sometimes, it's like I read the scripture and say, okay, all right, what's next? And other days, God will just, it's like he just reaches in and grabs my heart and shows me something completely new that I know I need to listen to. 
Isaiah said, he prophesied that a day will come when people will be so excited, they'll be overjoyed when they understand the significance and the blessing that everything has God has done for them. And they will sing a song that talks about, hey, God has come. He saved me and I'm going to choose to trust him. And I've got no need to be afraid anymore because the Lord God is my strength. And he's also my song. There's a song in my heart that just keeps me centered on him. And this morning, I seriously wonder what the song is in your heart. Now, how are things going between you and God? Now, I know that for many of you, you have been walking the road with Jesus for a very long time. I know for me, it's, it's many decades. And yet constantly, I have to come back to the basics, to the foundations, to remind myself that I am absolutely dependent on God. I'm human. I get it wrong. There are times when I have doubts. You know, sometimes we don't like to be honest about that. There are times when I have doubts even. And in those moments, it's even more important that the song in my heart re-centers me on everything that God's done for me, his love for me, and the call that he's placed upon my life. And you might be sitting there this morning saying, hey, Bruce, look, yeah, things are good. I, I'm just, I'm so grateful to God for all he's done. But you might also be sitting there and you know deep down that there's a struggle. There's a struggle going on. And you hear me speak about maybe about a life where there's a sense of fulfillment, when you know that you're truly loved exactly for who you are, when you know that those times when you get it wrong, that Jesus can, can wash that away, that he can give you forgiveness because he came to save us. And you say, oh, Bruce, that's not it for me. And worse still, sometimes you can be beating yourself up beating yourself up, trying to say, I must do better. I must try harder. I must, I must, I must, which leads to that perfectionist route. Folks, you're never going to make it that way. When Isaiah prophesied, and in particular this verse, and reminded us of what that song might be like, See, God has come to save me. Let's just think a bit about those next few words. I will trust in him. And I wonder whether today, for some of us, there's that need to actually grasp that again. Again, Lord, today, I will trust in you because I know I, I, I need your touch in my life. I know I've tried my hardest and I've come up short. I will trust in you. Now, I've tried to live a life that, you know, everybody else would look at me and think, oh, he's doing pretty good, but it just doesn't work. Lord, I will trust in you. What is the song in your heart this morning? Is it one that centers you on God? Are you really struggling? I've chosen a song for us to sing this morning as we just take a few moments to reflect. It's, it's quite an old song in the Salvation Army that really speaks about the transformation that's made possible because of all that Jesus has done. Sort of speaks about coming from this extreme point where I just haven't got it together and I've tried my hardest and recognising that God does offer me salvation and that if I will simply choose to trust, things will change completely. So let's look at that song. Thanks, Sean. Thank you this morning. Out of my bondage, sorrow and night. Let's face it, sometimes we feel like we're, we're all bound up. 
How do we get out of that? What's the solution? We say, Jesus, I come. I choose to trust in you. I choose to come into your freedom, into your gladness and into your light. Oh, Jesus, I I want to come. And this morning as we sing this together, I, I want to encourage you to be thinking about what is the song in my heart? What is happening that keeps me centered in my faith? And if this morning you've really not there, you've not taken that step, and you sense that Jesus is calling you to reach out and be dependent on him, my prayer would be that by his spirit, that he would really be touching your heart. I'm sure that many of you will know the song. Not everybody will. Let's sing the song and let's remind ourselves that it talks about this transformation. Let's sing together. great song isn't it and it's such a simple message that reminds us of what can happen when we choose to trust in God out of my bondage into light and if you look at the words of this next verse out of my shameful failure and loss that's tough isn't it it's tough to be so honest with God and to say hey God I feel shame about what's happened. I feel shame about me having failed you, let you down. And maybe this morning, if there's if there's something happening for you, or it could simply be that you say, I need to reconnect, I need to get this sorted, I need a better routine with you, God. The way is open for you to come, and if it would be helpful to come forward for prayer, Certainly, we want to invite you to do that. Let's sing this second verse. to let's just look at that second verse again and I want to encourage you each to maybe take some time to just prayerfully reflect I'm actually going to ask the band to sing that verse for us okay so while they sing let the Holy Spirit wash over you let the Holy Spirit just speak words of encouragement and refreshment into your heart as you say Lord I let it all go I want to let it go and I welcome you again into my life. So do that. As the band sings this verse, we invite the Holy Spirit to wash over you.
oh Father God, when we stop and are still and know that you are God, when we take the time to just be with you, we are overwhelmed by your love. Father, again today, we thank you for Jesus who came and gave his life for each of us here today. Father, you came that we would indeed be saved and would know that freedom and life and light and joy and peace. Oh, Lord, you want that for each of us within our, the depth of our being, that we would know that through faith and trust in Jesus Christ, we can be embraced into communion with the triune God. Oh, Father God, that it, it indeed is makes us just joyful and, and overwhelmed with appreciation and, and with gratitude for to you, the one true God. And so, Father, my prayer for everyone here today is that, that they wouldn't leave this place without knowing that they are yours, that they're loved and valued by you. Simply have to trust in who you are and ask that your Holy Spirit would lead them each moment of every day. And so, Father, we give you praise and we give you honor and we bless your name this morning for the great salvation that is ours through faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. suggest we stand and we'll sing it as an affirmation of our faith this morning. For us, Lord, we choose to trust in you. We choose to come to you. seats, friends.
we go from this place, friends, I pray that the blessing of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit would be upon you this week. May you go and each day choose to trust in him. God bless you. Thank <laughs> you.